What's going on guys? Welcome back to WDYDCSP. What do you do as a central store processing? So today on the how to series, the very first one, we're kicking it off with what I believe is the first step in the cycle of an instrument in sterile processing, which is storage. So typically I would show you where this stuff comes from, but then I would be, uh, I would be ruining the step of sterilization, which is to me the final step. Um, but let's be real, the beginning is the end. So storage is the beginning and the end of the cycle, but we're gonna start at the very beginning. So storage, what does Amy say in storage? In section 11, uh, Amy addresses storage um, and transportation of sterile items. And it basically it says it should be in an environmentally uh, controlled environment that is easily accessible and cleanable. Um, in a nutshell, it should be low traffic. Um, it tells you about the shelving recommendation that it should be enclosed. Um, but, you know, that is recommended. But it also tells you that if you're using an open um, racking system, as we see right here, um, that the shelving should have some kind of lining, especially the bottom shelf. The bottom shelf should be solid um, for cleaning purposes so that dirt doesn't kick back up when you're cleaning. It also gives you specific uh, parameters as to how far and from the floor, from the ceiling, and from the walls that uh, the items should be stacked. So it should be 8 to 10 inches from the floor. No more than 18 inches to the ceiling to allow proper function of the sprinkler systems. And 2 inches for the, from the wall to allow proper air circulation. At one point, Amy um, gave you specific temperatures for the sterile or the storage area. No longer is that a um, written guideline. It just basically tells you that you have to follow the facility's HVAC guidelines um, and their answery. Uh, ans answery, I'm saying it right? I don't know if I'm saying it right or not, but um, answer the ANSREA um, guidelines for um, condition. So it should be low traffic. Um, it should be free of dirt. Um, this area is monitored for temperature and humidity. Um, optimal humidity should not drop below 20% of humidity. And temperature ranges usually between uh, 72 and 78 degrees is the optimal storage uh, temperatures um, at one point. Again, no longer. So that range can have, this room is probably about 74 degrees. I'm not sure I can look at that right now let's take a look at that so this room is at actually 71.5 doesn't feel like it but anyway it tells you it also tells you that um wrapped items should not be stored underneath rigid containers on the same shelf so as you see you see no rigid containers on top of wrapped items it tells you that you should refer to the manufacturer's ifu for wrapped items on stacking and that items should not be stacked, compressed, bend, um, because it can compromise sterilization. Um, as you can see, this facility or where I am at and every facility I've ever worked at stacks wrapped items. It's almost unavoidable unless you have so much space that you can, but the more space you get, the more you wanna store, right? So as you can see, Wrapped items are stacked. We try not to put too many heavy items. Okay. This facility here. Okay. You can see that items are stacked. Um, and again, it's more for compromising or putting holes in the wrapped items. Um, you can stack containers if you can. Um, you should not stack a rigid container on top of a wrap container by guidelines. Okay, it also tells you how to transport the items to and fro. Um, 
the sterile area, the storage area. I'm not going to say sterile because this is not a sterile environment. This is a clean environment. Okay. So it tells you that if you are to transport sterile items into an area that is not environmentally controlled, that it should be um, transported in an enclosed case cart um, or covered in some way. Um, there are sterile cover barriers such as this right here, okay, that you wrap your items in and you can take it to the area that you need to. You should not be commingling your store your storage area should not be commingling non-sterile and sterile items. So you can see everything here should be sterile. How do you know that? Indicator locks change, external indicators change the tape the type one indicators right so all of this items here stored are sterile or sterile and the other um guideline that amy gives you as well as ischium and cbspd and all the uh governing bodies that give us our guidelines and standards um tell us that the facility is to determine the shelf life of the item you should be using first in first out if your facility is an event related facility meaning that an event triggers or compromises the sterility of the item then the shelf life of the item is determined by the facility now there are certain fractions and certain arguments that come into play when we talk about storage and event related um, practices in that expiration is considered an event. If that is the case, then event related practices are non-existent because every manufacturer of a container or a wrap has an expiration date that they have validated their medical device to have. So in our instance in this practice and this is probably the first practice i've ever facility i've ever been to that uses an expiration date um, for items that are sterile um, it is determined by either the medical device that is sterilized inside the container or what was determined by the facility so even though let's say um the manufacturer of the rich container gives you a one year of guaranteed uh, of sterility uh, assurance I'm sorry not guaranteed sterility assurance and the medical device itself doesn't have an expiration the facility might determine that they only want to hold items on a shelf for six months so you would put a six month expiration stamp on it the other thing to consider is the expirations of filters, locks, and believe it or not, if the external indicators have a um, expiration date. So you should be looking at the lock number of all your external indicators and see what expiration date they have on them. Um, because if they do expire at a certain time, guess what? That should be the expiration of the actual item itself. So a lot of guidelines, a lot of, uh, a lot of standards to give us, um, to lead us to decisions that we should make when it comes to sterile storage. Um, other things to consider again is cleanliness of the environment. So you don't want to be in a high traffic area. Okay. So this is just basically storage. Our, these are empty case carts. Um, this is not where we, um, this is not where we pull cases from. This is just where we store the case carts, okay? But the sterile storage area, as you can see, just houses um, sterile items. And you can mark the shelving for easy trackability of items, okay? If you have a tracking system, then you can go ahead and say, hey, cart one, cart two is housing X amount of items or this type of item or this type of tray so forth and so forth um, or you can have a list I've seen places where they have a list on what's on the outside on the outside of the 
of the row and it'll list everything that's in that row by shelf and everything of that nature which helps a lot but this is basically the meat and potatoes of a storage area um, again in my opinion this is the beginning and the end of the life cycle of an instrument okay you can't use something without having it being stored somewhere or it coming from somewhere so um, and some people argue that this is not the beginning because once it goes to the OR it's out of our hands but guess what if this area was to become compromised then it is CPD's responsibility to come in and reprocess all these trays so if let's say the sprinkler systems was to go off or it would become so humid in this area that it becomes an event that compromises sterility then all of these items have to get reprocessed okay if we were to inspect this area and it was very dusty or very uncleanly or we've seen dust formation on the top of trays or we've seen a lock popped of some sort or a lock missing those items have to be reprocessed so this is the beginning this is our this is this is our warehouse basically so all right guys so that is storage in a nutshell the beginning the how to okay so are we doing it by what is recommended no do a lot of facilities do it by what is recommended no but there has to be a risk assessment that the facility does to determine if there is a risk in what we are doing um so because sterility is not guaranteed um we can determine for ourselves that hey we're not damaging packages when we're stacking them we're not putting heavy items on top of one another um so we're not truly compromising our packages as we say are we following the ifu of the manufacturer of this specific wrapper no and again um this specific wrapper tells you that you want to do a risk assessment if you are going to stack you should not it's not recommended to stack items that are wrapped not recommended but a risk assessment should be done um so there you got it there you have it and um if you guys do it any other way or you see it any other way let me know guys let me you know put down in the comment section show me let me know you know send a picture whatever um i'd like to see a facility that doesn't stack um uh wrapped items uh very few unless you use a handle um carousel system and even with that i believe that you are limited in space um and it comes to a point where at some point you still have to stack something in there because um it you run out of space you run out of space so do you always build for the future and have so much space that you say hey you're abundant and you're never going to add to it there comes a point where you have to add items and just you just run out of space so stacking is almost unavoidable um, some facilities i know have gone to a full rigid container system to avoid wrapping and um it helps so you can stack rigid containers but when it comes to wrapped items, it's very difficult not to stack. All right, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Give me a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And the next thing that we're going to tackle all together is transportation. Because from here in storage comes transportation. It has to get to the OR somehow. So I briefly spoke about it. We'll go into it in a little bit more detail. Um, so until next time, guys, peace.